All right, today I'm gonna to show you the home screen as soon as you log in to your Alpine AQ account. Um, this is a, a great place just for a general overview of what's going on um, across your org and your data network. Um, so the first thing we have here is generally we have some news and announcements up top of the rotating banner, as you can see with this Dutchie integration here. Um, you also have a support tile where you can contact our team, access support center, news, API docs, stuff of that nature. Um, and then below here, these first two big tiles here that I'm showing you are related to lifecycle management of your customers. Um, so you can change the date range here, it'll recalculate. Um, the longer you are out, the easier it is to understand. Um, and that's generally just because like customers are first start in an active bucket, right? So they're a brand new customer, they come in, they make their first order. We need to discover information about them um, with orders over time before we can actually provide you with where are they in their life cycle with you? Are they absent? Are they highly absent from their normal time to come to the store? Um, so I'll show you how that works right now. First, you have your leaky bucket um, and all these little question marks have tool tips on them. But you can see I have new customers and then I have likely gone customers. And it's only 2,500 people and 208 likely gone. So you're probably wondering, well, I have a lot more personas in my contact database. Why is it only showing these number of people up here for the 90 day stretch? This is because we don't have enough data on your other personas to have them inside of a lifecycle um, management structure. So they're gonna be left out until they meet those qualif qualifications. Otherwise, you're just gonna have dirty data and it's not gonna inform actionable decisions across your org. So you can see leaky bucket. Um, here's the ratio. Um, these are new customers won. So I won 39 new customers we've never seen before on this day. And then I lost six customers that I have had coming to my store on a regular basis and they fell down this queue into the black area here from the green area, which is active all the way to gone. And you can see those stages below here. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. And then you can see customers won back. So these are the number of customers who returned after they fell into the gone category, right? Um, and that's really important to understand uh, because those are the people you never want to lose. So they went from being very active customers. I come to the store once a week, like clockwork, once a week, and I make an order. And then all of a sudden, I disappear for five weeks. There's a big red flag. I might be going to a competitor. Um, I might be losing interest in certain products. I might have a customer support issue. Um, there's a lot of reasons, of course, right? But you wanna know about that and you wanna be able to trigger actionable marketing or outreach if that's happening. So um, before we get to that, the last tile up here is earned with conversions. So this is gonna be the total revenue derived from track conversions across all available connected tools. So as you know, Alpine has messaging channels like texting, email, push, but um, you know, we also track the actions you do on connected tools. So if you send emails through MailChimp, we're gonna say, we're gonna log every time you send an email from MailChimp to customers that we're tracking in your personas database. If they go and convert on MailChimp, that revenue that was generated because of MailChimp will also be inside of this earned with conversions tile. It is not just revenue earned with Alpine IQ marketing. If you'd like to see the split out of that revenue, you can go run a data analysis report and go to the actions and conversions tab, which is broken out extremely heavily by actions, by channel, all that kind of stuff. So maybe check out another video for that. Um, life cycle distribution. So back to life cycle. Um, this graph represents your customer base's probability of making another purchase. Our calculations purposely leave out anonymous consumers, which are people paying with cash, we don't have any personal info on, and instead we optimize towards purchase frequency and lapses and visits. So what that's meaning is that if I come in and I pay with cash every time, um, there's no way to track me, so I'm not, I'm not, we will never know how much Nick comes to the store and if he goes absent, because we don't know the average days between his normal visits, right? Um, 
So we're going to leave me out of this calculation at all, which is like what I talked about earlier with the number of customers and personas. But if we do have that information and we know Nick's average uh, days between visits and what it is and we're confident about that, they fall into a life cycle distribution. So you can see I have 8972 active customers. I'm positive they're active. These are people that are chilling. These are people that have gone absent. These are highly absent and then gone. And then this is the revenue tied to those customers. So right now I have 71 plus 57 plus 496 in pretty much risky or lost revenue, which is a lot. I wanna capture that back with one back customers up here, right? So um, what do I do? I could make campaigns across it and we'll, we'll go to that in, a, in, a, in another video, but um, you, know, you could make audiences and then messaging to people that at the moment they fall into an absent category, I wanna ping them with a deal. When they're highly absent, I wanna chuck a discount uh, into their wallet and I wanna gift them points. If they're gone, I wanna send them a survey. I wanna figure out why they're gone. They didn't listen to any of the discounts or any of the things that I triggered as they were falling down the life cycle stats, right? Uh, life cycle buckets, apologies. Um, so these are all really amazing things to be able to understand and trigger messaging off of. Um, this works differently per user. So like I said earlier, if my average days between visits is once every seven days and I go two months without coming to the store, just picking a random number, I'm definitely gonna be in the gone category because I'm a lost customer. Um, if I go you know, two days without coming to the store, I'm still within that seven day window. I'm still an active customer. And honestly, I'm still an active customer if I go a little bit beyond that. I mean, I might just have a weekend trip I took, right? It has nothing to do with this organization and their you know, ability to keep me as a customer. But eventually I'm gonna go into chilling and then down into gone. If I come once every six months as a customer, I'm not gonna be gone until I'm missing for a very long time, right? So that's how this entire lifecycle distribution works. Super valuable. Um, data network. So the data network is gonna show you all of your integrations, your sources of data, your destinations where you're pushing data, and then give you an overview of like how well those are performing. So you can see users uh, source from this lifetime, zero. Users source from trees, 45,000 almost, or more than 45,000. And in the last 24 hours, we did 114 new customers that were sourced from that trees integration. The sign up form has had 1,000, uh, signups and there was five in the last 24 hours. These flow directly into your pipeline. So we have 75 audiences that are actively segmenting the deduped customers, the enriched customers that come in through this pipeline. So really they come from the sources, they go into the data enrichment engine, they fall into audiences after they're sifted after that. Um, the data enhancements and identity resolution runs every couple of hours. It really depends on the integrations and the API limits of those integrations that are connected. You can see mine is running right now, but usually there's a countdown timer to the next time that's scheduled. Um, audiences sift every 10 to 20 minutes. It depends on how large the audience is, but it's much, much more often than enhancements and merging. Um, then you have your total personas that are getting you know, pushed into these audiences and then destination. So the same thing with over here, you're gonna have how many people were pushed and then the destinations of those, those data sets. Um, so again, these are gonna appear when you attach an integration, but uh, you know, they're, they're not gonna push new data records until you actually select that as a data destination on the left here. So if I, just as an example, I'll go create, look at an audience and let's say I wanna, send my CBD product buyers to Google Sheets and have that update itself as a sheet. I can do that, I click Google Sheets, I hit save, and then every time we run a new um, uh, identity resolution process and do that data enhancement with the countdown on the other page, we'll push all of these 8,000 users into that Google Sheet and update it, right? So that's pretty much the overview of the homepage. Hope you enjoyed it. Please reach out if you, if you have any questions or comments.